Good morning, all. Come on in. Not that anybody's watching. Oh, there we go. Georgia wins. Oh, it's Marge right behind. What's going on, y'all? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Marianne, good morning. Oh, Georgia, while you're here, you want anything special planted in the garden, let me know. We're getting ready to put stuff in here in the next next 10 days or so. Just ordered 20 pounds of uh, potato, uh, seed potato, so that ought, to, that ought to get us going. So, what's going on, y'all? Bill, your, yours is my favorite greeting for this morning. Goof morning? Yeah, it feels that way. I think Jenny poked me right between the eyes and was like, dude, it's 6.30, so I'm dragging this morning. Ugh. I was on camera all day yesterday, too. Miss Anna May, are you asking me to have a blessed Tuesday? Have a blessed Tuesday? Lord willing. Good morning, all. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody here. Check my text. <laughs> so, how are we doing this morning? Tell me something good. Something good on this end. So we finally got that pig pen finished and moved the little move the little porkers over. Um, so they are. I will be posting some pictures. I know you all have been asking for pig pictures, so I'll have them. Although trying to get a picture of the pen, which nobody cares about, and the pigs, which everybody does, is a bit of a challenge. Let's see. This one's not too bad. Uh, you can't you can't see a bunch. Can't see a lot, but here are the little guys. They're putting on some weight. They are definitely putting on some weight. There we go. Let's see. Camera's up there. There. So little guys are ready to roll. Caleb's starting to sell them to his buddies. So things are things are going good. And then we'll pick up a couple that we'll get from other people. We'll be off and running. Let's see. What was the other thing that was good? Finish pig pens. Oh, and seeds have started arriving. The issue is I've been told all, all winter long is that there was going to be no seeds and they were going to take forever to get here. Well, I've got most of them. So that's a win. So feeling good. Hope you all have something to put in a little smile on your face, a little surprise uh, to keep you going. So, anyway. Well, I got enough for you here this morning, so let's get started. It is March the 16th, which means it is uh, it is St. Patrick's Day Eve. Hooray, hooray. Hope you got plans for tomorrow. Um, and uh, and we are on page 184 on the book in the book entitled Common Prayer. We are also on the Common Prayer app and on commonprayer.net. And whether you're gathering with us live or gathering with us later in the day, we are just glad that you are gathering um, at a time that continues to be a gathering is such a challenge. We're really grateful to have you along. So thank you. Thanks so much for making some time today. And so without further ado, we're going to invite you into a moment of silence. If you're like me and waking up a little late this morning, just breathe out whatever leftover ox leftover air from yesterday um, is left in your lungs and bring it breathe in a little bit of new oxygen. Let's start let's start the day with full lungs and hopefully alongside of that a full heart. I invite you into a moment of quiet. We begin our day by saying, O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. And we pray a collect for uh, the week of, let's see, March 14th, uh, which we posted yesterday, and we'll just use uh, for use for this week. As together we pray, saying, O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, 
that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And to our antiphon for today, Lord God of hosts, hear our prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. As we hold this in our minds, as we, as we ask God to hear, and yet are confident that God always hears, so we pray the words of Psalm 84, verses 8 through 12. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God, than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Lord, God of hosts, hear our prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. <clears throat> Today we continue to read these first, uh, first chapters from the book of Exodus. We're in Exodus chapter 2, verse 23, and we'll be reading until chapter 3, verse 15. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to Pharaoh, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And he said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. 
When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said, said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. This is the word of the Lord. And I think these initial verses... Um, the reading for today, the final verses of chapter 2. It just hit me with such power. Um, it simply says, The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. Just the notion that God hears. God hears the cry of the oppressed. And that that is the thing it's not moses that ins that instigates the exodus that instigates you know all, all that goes down in exodus no it's it's the god hears that is the that is the basis for it all um in all of israel's culture all of israel's uh, cult and religion and all that flows out of the idea that god heard their suffering and so, it, and so we can't we can't overstate that enough, how attuned God's ear is to the cry of the oppressed. And our second reading is from Mark chapter six, verses thirty through forty six. The apostle gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But Jesus answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we going to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in, the gr in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And you can post now, or perhaps you can post later, but I'd like to invite you to post uh, one way or the other. Um, these feeding stories um, are sort of are well woven into our pop culture, and so we don't need to be well familiar with the Bible to be familiar with Jesus feeding the multitudes. And I wonder how you hear those stories and how they speak to you. Um, there's so much packed into them, and 
they're one of the times that I wish I could have been present at the events of Scripture, um, just to watch that unfold. But I wonder how it speaks to you this morning and how it might speak to us as a group. Coming back to our antiphon, we pray. Lord, God of hosts, hear our prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. Today's reflection is, I think, the first that I have vague memories of from a year ago. Um, I just remember... Um, I just I, I remember this final phrase um, in my head and so it's nice to come back and be reminded of these words that we read from the 19th century French mystic, a Teresa of Lisseau, who wrote these words. My vocation is love. In the heart of the church, who is my mother, I will be love. So I shall be everything and so my dreams will be fulfilled. To make love loved. My vocation is love, to make love loved. And sometimes as I observe pop culture, as I observe, you know, our, our media environment, et cetera, et cetera, um, I'm reminded that we often know what love looks like. We just don't love that that's what love is. And I know that, I know that language can get a little tricky, but we look at it and we're like, yeah, that's probably love. I just don't love it. And so this idea of making love loved, to embrace love in the ways that it manifests itself, um, I think is such a powerful and deep thought and worthy of my own meditation for today. Um, you know, and that's what I see as you all are posting your thoughts about, uh, about Jesus' feeding miracles. Um, and you all are saying wonderful things. Thank you. Um, you know, that's what we love about them is that Jesus demonstrates love and we love it. You know, taking care of the poor, taking their taking care of those who are in a deserted place, even if it takes miraculous means to do it. We love that story. We love Jesus's love there. I pray that we would love it in our own communities as well, maybe a little less miraculous but no less impactful. We would love love. Turning to our prayer list today, um, and without any further updates, um, although, no, that's not true. So I know there's uh, there's one person um, that I have been praying for and will continue to pray for, but has um, been very clear that they did not want to be on the prayer list, which is no problem. Um, hey, you do you. Um, so we're, gonna, we're simply going to add an unspoken prayer request uh, to our list for today. And so let us pray. Lord, before we get to any talk or discussion of what it is we're called to do or how we are called to follow you, particularly in light of this feeding miracle, where it's wise to stop and just remind ourselves that you love us just as we are, just as we sit. We may not yet be our fullest and best selves, but you love us to death. You love us like crazy. It's hard for some of us to comprehend. It's hard for us to wrap our minds around it. And yet, maybe somewhere deep, deep down inside of us, we know it to be true. We're really glad that you love us. In fact, we're really glad that you like us. Lord, what a way to start today, to wake up knowing that the creator of the universe looks upon us with favor, smiles upon us, loves us, likes spending time with us. And Lord, that is, that is ultimately what gets us up in the morning. Not to achieve, 
not to carry out responsibilities. What gets us up is love. And so Lord, we pray that the love that you show us can then be just showered on others in ways appropriate, helpful, and, and powerful. Lord, help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to love the communities that you've put us in. Help us to love the ways that one another show love to each other. Lord, help us to be champions of love in our world. And though we may stumble and though it may go sideways from time to time, but we know if, that we, if we lean into love, that something new, something amazing will break forth in our world because that's what happens each and every morning. Your love causes something amazing to break forth in us as we get up and live our lives every day. So if that's true for us, maybe, just maybe, it'll be true for others. So Lord, help us to love well. And in doing so, may we see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so it's in love, the best that we can muster, that we pray for those who are on our prayer list. And Lord, we could, we could go a, do a deep dive on each and every concern that is on here. But Lord, on this day, we choose to just focus on the people and say that whatever they are enduring, Lord, we know that you love them. And so we do our best to show love by lifting them up before you and entrusting them to your sure and certain hands. And so today we pray for Dave Cunningham, Tom Cross, Brian Cunningham, Ann Wilson, Jeremy Dutterer, Alan Showalter, Sandy Suit, Savannah Price, Karen Anderson, Cart Denner, an unspoken request, Carolyn Yost, Baby Lacey, Gene Snyder, David Miller, Margie Snyder, an unspoken request, Richard and Deborah Hahn, Steve Moorhead, Joe Zentgraf, Terry Shavius, Jennifer Ramsey, for Caitlin, for Richard and Beatrice Hess, an unspoken request, Donna Rill, Marsha Brown, Laurie Posey, Artis Tully, Richard Lindsay, Bruce Ludlow, and Bob Scott, Helen McQuay, LaRue Newsbaum, Butch McCotter, Darlene Hayes, Rob Rickle, for Diane, Joanne Buell, Julie Scher, Burt Remmers, Gail Gacharna, Perry Lyons, Sandy Lloyd, Nicole Jordan and her baby, for Nathan Goodpasture, Doug Berry, the family of Lisette Gautier, for Amy and Jake Wolf and their six-year-old baby Evelyn, for Sheila Sweeney, Kitsy Krabs, Steve Yelton, Carolyn Yost, John Cunningham, for Ellen, and for an unspoken request, unknown to us, but always and everywhere known to you. These are our requests, O oh Lord. These are the ways that we attempt to show love in these early morning hours. Hear us, Lord, as we pray these prayers and the prayers that each of us hold in our own hearts. As we seek to follow the way of our Savior, so we pray the prayer he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord God, please keep us balanced between the times you call us apart to be alone with you and the times when we dwell in the midst of others who claim you as Lord. 
that we might in every circumstance know ourselves in the beloved community of your Trinity. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Well, that last prayer rings a little differently a year later. But nevertheless, um, my thoughts are of love this morning. And thank you for sharing um, your your thank you for sharing your thoughts about these uh, these feeding miracles and uh, like Steve I think a lot about communion when I read these stories um, like Marge and Marianne um, it it reminds me of poverty and who we are called to um, and people who find themselves in circumstances often because they're following Jesus um, <laughs> who, who find themselves in circumstances of need and how Jesus bails them out um, and Jesus um, and you know, Vicky illustrating how Jesus fed everyone who was in within the circle there. Um, just wonderful reflections, and thank you very much. Keep them coming as you meditate upon it th throughout the day. So until we gather tomorrow, and whatever your day may look like, um, may God bless you with love, and may you experience love from a myriad of places. May you find love coming from a place you never expected it today. And we look forward to being able to share those stories together um, of God's love popping up in the most amazing spots. So I pray that for you as you go about your day. Peace and good, y'all.